I've had a lot of comments recently asking me, GGB, where's the Blue Jays franchise? Where has it been? Well, I have a perfectly good reason as to why it hasn't been around. And well, that reason is it just wasn't a good fit. What I've sort of done is taken a step back and realized that the Blue Jays franchise kind of was going a couple of different ways that I didn't really want it to. And honestly, I wanted to take a little bit of time for the OSFM rosters to come out. And now we have version three of the rosters, which if you never checked them out, please look up the OSFM rosters. They're fantastic. We have now full minor leagues. There's plenty of players from the beginning that are now transitioning into the majors over time. Real life prospects. That's a big part of this franchise and why I wanted to restart it. And the other part of the reason why I'm restarting it is we wanted to do a different team. So the Royals will be the team going forward. And a lot of you guys are saying, well, are you even going to continue this series? The answer is yes. And looking at the Royals roster, so there's a couple of people that are actually pretty solid. You got Whit Merrifield, you've got Nicky Lopez, a solid young second baseman. Mondesi at shortstop's pretty good. Alex Gordon, Hunter Dozier, I'm probably going to try to trade. Jorge Soler. I mean, they aren't a bad team per se, but they are one of the worst in the major leagues right now. So I got to find a way to turn this franchise around. And I think I'm going to try to at least target doing that is from their pitching standpoint. And what I'm seeing from a pitching standpoint is their starting rotation isn't necessarily great and their bullpen is just outside of their closer and setup man it's atrocious so as i told you guys the big thing i want to do is improve the bullpen so the first way we're going to do that is trade for luis castillo from cincinnati this guy is really good in my opinion great potential and they only won hunter dozier who i was already planning to get rid of Keith Phil Meyer, who is a starting pitcher that's kind of a little bit lower for us. And then Chris Owings, who's a backup shortstop that I don't need because I have Mondesi, who's the stud. So we're going to make that trade. They took it. So we have a new starting pitcher to help out our team. Now, another guy I want is German Vasquez from the Rockies. They're a team that isn't really a pitcher's ballpark. So his value is a little deflated. So we're going to try to get him. They end up wanting Jake Junis, Jorge Soler, and MJ Melendez. I'm okay with this because Melendez... The young prospect, a catcher. We have plenty of them there. Jorge Soler is at right field. We have a guy already ahead of him and with Merrifield. And then Jake Junis is a starting pitcher. But Vasquez or Marquez is younger and he's actually better. So I'm down for this trade. We'll offer that one up. And we got it. Now, because we got rid of Hunter Dozier, we do need the third baseman. And the guy that we're trying to get his rights from Japan, this guy right here, Christian Villanueva. So we're going to offer him a five-year, $17.5 million contract. We give him, honestly, a player option there at the end of the fourth year. I'll just see what he basically wants. So we'll give him a platoon role, but I think he's actually going to be a starter. So we're going to say, uh, actually, you're an everyday kind of guy because you don't really have a third basis. So we're going to make him that offer. And uh, he's excited to accept. So we brought him from Japan back here to the States, and he was good for the Padres. Now we should be good for the Royals. So with those moves now underneath our belt, here's what our lineup basically looks like. We have Monacy at the top. Billy Hamilton has a lot of speed in the one and the two. We've been Merrifield, Perez, Villanueva, Lopez, Gordon, O'Hearn, and then Marquez or whoever essentially is our pitcher at that point. On our bench, it's not great, but we have a third baseman, two catchers, and a first baseman. There's some work to be done still. Our pitching rotation is much improved. We have Marquez, we have Castillo at the one and the two, and then we have Keller, Goglin, and then Duffy there for three, four, and five. Is it ideal? No, but should we win a decent amount of games this season? Absolutely, yes. So we're picking up here. Luis Castillo was pitching. We're a couple of games in, and he's got a good situation. Jan Makano also is playing really bad. He's got a shutout looming here in the ninth inning. First pitch is, ooh, okay, we lost a little bit of it. We're trying to lock him in here, get top of the ninth inning. He can get that complete game shutout right here if he just locks in against a guy that's struggling at the plate. Go change up outside here. Got him locked in. Ooh, he's going to miss big on that one. Got him on the one-two count. We're going to try to go low and away from Makata here. The lefty's trying to lock in. He hits one up the middle. We got our guy going center field, and it's an easy out for the first one in the inning by Billy Hamilton. Yonder Alonso's coming in. A lot of these guys are not batting well. 143 on the season. Not exactly ideal. We're going to go inside on him here with the two-seamer. And back-to-back -back lefties face here. And Luis Castillo is clicking at the moment. I like this so far. Everyone on their feet. The Royals are actually looking pretty solid right now. I like this. Change up outside. Ooh, we just missed. And that stamina getting pretty low. On one count going high. Right across the middle. Jammed him inside a little bit. This should be the second out here. Our third baseman, Villanueva, is right there. And he's got the out for the second one. Here comes Jimenez. This dude is batting 429. Not, uh, not bad. He's one for three today. He's got himself a single. And the energy's looking a little low, but we're going to go four-seamer. We're going to jam him inside. Strike out or an out here. Be perfect. And he fouls the first one off and kills the fan. Oh, one count. We're going two-seamer. High and tight. Jimenez goes in. We jam him. The second baseman, Lopez, is right there. And that is it. Luis Castillo with the 1-0 victory. He's going to walk out of here with a W. I will take that complete game shutout. Look. 
I see my trades all you want. We gave up a little bit of young prospects, but Luis Castillo pitched the gem today. To recap, Luis Castillo's stats today, I mean, eight strikeouts, six hits allowed, nine innings pitched with three walks, not a single earned run. That is beautiful. That's what I want to see. I'm happy with how we played. On the season, we're doing pretty well. We're eight and six, but we've got a situation here where we're down against Cleveland. And we need Whit Merrifield to start this inning pretty strong because we are here in the bottom of the ninth inning again. Cleveland has a 1-0 lead at home. We want to make sure we win our games at home. It's extremely important to do that. First pitch in here. Right hand's going to get one. We poke it out to right field. That one's going shallow enough. It is going to drop. Actually, we wanted to test that at second base, but on second thought, we're going to pump the brakes and be glad we got that one. Ryan O'Hearn up. His average is barely above 200. Again, we're trying to figure out which of these guys will be in the team long term, which of them won't be in O'Hearn isn't doing himself any favors he does have five home runs which is good his rbi is at seven though is kind of weird a lot of solo shots for him an opportunity to drill one and he's a little too underneath of it could go for a hit and run could go for a steal but they're keeping tabs on him at first base so what mary gonna have to just stay for right now you know her to get a base hit something in the gap would be beautiful here and that one nearly hits him in the face here comes the one one oof inside two two one count coming in inside again a three one now Pitcher is not looking good right now. He's uh, he's got a 3-1 count. We got to lock in for a good fastball, but do we got good fastball and we miss it. This is a big pitch right here. A full count. We got a guy on first base with solid speed. Do not want to strike out here. I hate everything. So after that, we have Salvador Perez coming up, who again is not having a great season himself. Over three, strike out in the seventh inning the last time he came up, but he is a righty batting against a lefty. This should give him an opportunity do something positive comes the pitch high heat and we missed it one run game a double play is disastrous here he's outside again two one count got a lock in got a hold of one that's gonna be a high shallow fly ball however inside the lines and now we have two outs still down a run so lucas duda is up i don't really feel great about what he's doing he's batting about 230 in the year got some solid power but need somebody to come through i don't know if it's going to be lucas duda duda can come up huge here with the base hit we have struggled we have four base hits in the day one by a merrifield obviously oh my god that was horrible the last at bat saw a full count and so does this one what can lucas duda do for you he's gonna get a hit that was gonna be in the gap we're gonna send our guy over this should at least score lucas duda getting a rare double for him that is gonna be a game tying hit for lucas duda 15 speed, ladies and gentlemen. He got a double. Christian Villanueva is up 0 for 2. Had a walk early in the game. Again, it's a big signing for us out of free agency. I think they're actually going to intentionally walk him. Oh, Frank Kona says, look, walk the young fella. We know he's got some skills. And who are they going to bring up here? I don't know our lineup well enough yet to figure out who's going to be after Villanueva. So Villanueva, take yourself to first base. You got two guys on. Alex Gordon, 1 for 3. It's interesting they put a lefty in the lefty i like their strategy but i think he's gonna be okay two home runs a year six rbis looking for that seventh rbi here it's a hold of a slider but it's a little late and foul probably should have swung at the first pitch if we're being honest but it was still in the strike zone you got a hold of one ladies and gentlemen this might be it that's curtains get him out of here alex gordon the three run shot get him out of here baby terry francona can't believe it guess who can't believe it i can't believe it Alex Gordon going yard. Everyone's at a home plate to celebrate with. Then we get our first walk off as the new GM of the Kansas City Royals. The beautiful thing. Honestly, with the way the first at bat went, I was like, we're not going to walk out of here with a W. But the way that one went it was perfect. I would strike out all over again just to have that moment again. So the winning pitcher ends up being Homer Bailey. A little over three innings pitch, had two walks, no strikeouts, no one runs, not a single hit given up. And Brad Hand. Tokes away the lead. Four earned runs. Hate to see it. Alex Gordon, though, by far the MVP of today's game. And we're facing the Yankees in our final game of today's episode. But look, I got a good feeling. Our boy German Marquez is up on the mound, and he's doing pretty well. And we're facing the Yankees again with that 4-0 lead. We're 10-10 in the season, and we're trying to go ahead and lock in that 11th win. Because I don't want to be below 500. This is a team... I don't know if we make the playoffs, per se, but we should at least make some noise this year. And I don't want to be 500 just yet. Marquez coming in here with the slider. A little bit too much heat on that. Back here again with the slider on that 1-1 one, one count. Marquez delivers it. Beautiful placement. And we got a 1-2 count now. Gary Sanchez all of a sudden is not exactly happy. So the 1-2. Going with a little bit of extra heat on it. 
Beautiful placement, but it's fouled. We got an opportunity now to put Gary Sanchez back to the pine. Marquez coming in with the curveball. Oh, throws him. Take the bat off your shoulder, young fella. Strikeout number 10 on the game for Marquez. Tell me again he wasn't worth it. Because he was. Aaron Hicks is now up for the Yankees. 0 for 3 on the day. Trying to make it 0 for 4 here with Marquez. But all we got into these pitches right now. And that should have been a strike. Never want to start in the bat going down 1-0. But if we can fight back here. We're way early on that. But somehow he swings. And that swing ended up being a foul ball. So we're back here again. 1-1 one, one count. The slider. We're going to take a little bit off of it. Oh my god. We're missing completely. And we're getting bailed out. We've worked our way into a 2-2 count. We've missed on a couple of pitches. But I think we've got a good opportunity here. If we can lock in. Oh, he's going to foul one off. We got it. We're posted up underneath of it. The shutout is still looking good. Alvaro Perez gets the out. And we got two outs now in the Yankees in the bottom of the ninth. Hendricks Morales is probably the last batter of the game today. He has one RBI with a 233 average. I feel like we can put him away right here. We're going to go high fastball. Tempt him a little bit. This is technically his hot zone. We're going to play with a little bit of fire. He 96 on the gun. We're going back up high, our 100th pitch of the game. We don't want to go too much further past this one, but so far, Marquez has been electric and he gets another good call. So now, it be the payoff pitch. We're going with the curveball. We're going to bring it inside. Morales swing and miss on this one. Let's find out. Oh, he does swing. He makes contact. Lopez has it. He has zero speed. And uh, it is an easy out for Marquez to get a beautiful shutout. Nine innings pitch, complete game, 10 strikeouts. Zero runs given up. That's what I like to see.